What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash tales from retail. This story's called, Yell at Me, No Refund for You. English is my secondary language and I'm on mobile. And I'd like to classify this as long, so sorry. Okay, so I work in a pretty popular online shopping store as a customer service consultant service. What? One that shall not be named. Now, this really happens to all of us, almost daily, but this one I had just yesterday, and I think it's worth a share. Whenever someone orders something and doesn't get it or returns it, of course they'll get a refund. No matter how rude they are, it's their money after all. This one was a special case, though. Uh, Here's the cast. Customer. Me. A customer calls and I start with a basic, Hello and welcome to Blah. My name is Blah. What can I do for you? And without even finishing the sentence, the customer goes yelling, Why haven't I gotten my money back yet? It's been so long, yada yada yada. I'm used to these customers, but I get so angry every time. I keep my cool though and I go to the order to check why he hasn't gotten his refund yet. While checking, I saw that he returned the item almost three weeks ago. It takes one week, seldom two, to get a refund. And that this was the fourth time he'd called us about this. The colleagues always told him to wait and be patient and so on. I thought, okay, I'd also be a tad angry with this. But then, while checking, I noticed that he paid with coupons. Alright. Side note, coupons here are given either with special offers, buy 50 euro of this, get 5 euro coupon. Either, usually they'd be given to the customer from the customer service, us, as a way of apology or compensation when a package is delivered late or badly or in general about other problems. And coupons can only be used one time and they are non-refundable, since they're considered as a discount for future orders. We also have a way of checking how it was given to them. I don't know why the colleagues kept telling him to wait. They either did not see that it was a coupon or were avoiding confrontation. I informed the customer that he paid with coupons, and since they're for single uses, he will get no refund. I explain it pretty politely and clearly. He doesn't understand. I tell him that since it's a coupon and it counts as a discount, the item is considered to be a gift of some sort. Since he technically did not pay for it, he won't get money from us. Okay, so coupon like a gift certificate. After a lot of explaining and him yelling at me the whole goddamn time, he probably ran out of excuses as I explained the gist of it numerous times. He said something along the lines of, I have no idea what these even are. This is the first time I've heard of a coupon. Bad move, bro. I checked to see how how he got the coupons and all of them were given to him from the customer service and were obligated to send a confirmation email each time so I knew this was a straight up lie. He just desperately wanted those 4.45 euro from us. I proceeded to inform him of this and told him that I have numerous confirmation emails in front of me and I can gladly send them again for him to see. He pretends it's a misunderstanding and that he knows what the coupons are now. Sure. Thing is, I now notice that the customer was actually abusing the system, so to speak, as he'd call for extremely minor inconveniences and ask for a coupon from us as compensation for the trouble. Things like, why is this particular thing in your website so hard to find? The customer should have it easy. I demand a compensation. We always leave notes after every call and say what the call was about, so I was reading the notes my colleagues left from previous calls. I was smelling a Karen, except it was a man. A Bob? Anyway, <laughs> I was getting tired of repeating the same things to him, so I basically told him that we can talk all day, but there's nothing I can do as the system won't allow it. Sure enough, that shuts him up and we end the conversation. Since he was abusing the system and customer service, I proceeded to report him to my superiors for this, which meant no coupons anymore and we were allowed to hang up if he wouldn't cooperate. Normally, the client has to hang up. Uh, we have this dumb disconnect rate that we have to take care of. 
Furthermore, I actually could make an exception and just put another coupon on his account on that same value. But he yelled at me the whole time, so of course he wasn't getting it. The customer wouldn't know this, but I did, and it gave me a lot of satisfaction. Basically, whether we refunded the coupon or not was entirely our decision. And it was kind of an unwritten rule to refund it if the customer is nice and genuinely made a mistake or didn't see it. But if they're complainy or carony to us, we'd give them the good ol' I'm sorry, the system won't allow it. Moral of the story, be nice to customer service. Yes, I've said this before, but someone's ability to pull some strings is almost entirely dependent on your attitude toward them. All right, this story's called, Then Suddenly, Cats. Alternative titles, Cat Scratch Fever. <sighs> titles. Because of sudden and surprising demand on this post, Link. I'ma tell this one. It's a long one, but bear with me. This still happened at the store I work, but it was ages ago. At the time, I was lower in the totem pole and had this manager who was quite a character. Seriously, I have so many stories of this person. I will share eventually, like that one time he was almost shot by his own gun by another employee during a midnight citizen arrest on a cat burglar, which was a story of its own. Or him almost getting his dick bitten off by a rat. But I'm digressing. First, you need to get the setup of the store. We had this huge storage room, almost the size of the store itself, connected by a bay door on the store level, and both buildings were connected by a basement. This door wasn't always latched or closed, since employees would come and go all the time to replenish the stock. This is crucial. We also had a mice problem at the time, though calling them mice is like calling the Mariana Trench a puddle. These were the unholy spawn of darkness, spite, and anger. They were huge! I've seen one that was the same size of a small dog. They could eat through cinder blocks, they could run on electrical cables, and just stop and stare at you like a diabolical and deranged red-eyed Batman Lovecraftian nightmare, and I swear on my gaming console that I once saw one beating up a cat. Along with the mice problem came the cat one. The house that was on the side of the building was vacant for years, and quite dilapidated too. The house experienced explained the rats. The cats were neighborhood cats that found paradise and decided to settle and multiply. You get the picture, right? Right. So it was around holidays. I don't quite remember which one it was, though I could place my bet on Christmas time. The store was packed. Cues that went to the back of the store and then wrapped around itself. At that time, I was in charge of the flow of customers in and collecting the shopping baskets and carts. I'm focused on that when I hear a loud bang and everybody freezes. Total silence and confusion. Then suddenly, cats! Cats on the shelves, cats under carts and people's feet, cats and kittens of all shapes and colors, an entire herd of them all over. It was chaos, it was madness, it was Sparta. You could just imagine some frantic classical song was playing in the background at that time to go along with the pandemonium. I prefer Four Seasons Summer. After them runs in my frantic manager with a broomstick in hand. Some of the cats hide beneath the shelves, others ran through the open door outside. But some, some saw this clear, huge pane of glass that was clean till it sparkled over one of the cashiers and decided that was a good exit window. A run, then a leap, and then bang! And it's raining cats, hallelujah, it's raining cats, amen! All over this well-dressed, bright blue two-piece suit with a leather briefcase. Cat meets arms, face, and briefcase he raised to protect himself. Fight! 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 All you could hear was the caterwauling from both. Flying fur everywhere in claws sparkling at the lights. It was carnage. Finally, he bravely fought them off without help. Like how we were going anywhere near that. And they scattered to places unknown. The manager ran up to the man, offering to take him to the hospital for the scratches and bites. Here are where things get weird. He doesn't want to go. All he wants is $300 for the damages on his briefcase. Keep insisting it's real leather and very expensive, while he bled all over his very bright royal blue suit with a bright red tie. The other manager walked in and ordered everything to resume 
doom. Like what happened didn't just happen. Suit was taken to the hospital for shots, none of the cats were vaccinated, and four co-workers and I ended up on cat herding duty. Life resumed. I did end up adopting one of the beasts, this huge, and I mean huge, ginger monstrosity I ironically named Shimena? 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 Zimena? Zimena? I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> I'm kidding. Why the manager was chasing the cats? Nobody knows. He won't say. I would ask, but I'm happy not knowing. What an insane story. Um, I mean, I believe it. I believe it. But God dang, that was ridiculous. So much going on. Cats, cats, cats everywhere. Ah, kind of reminds me that one time I, uh, I'll save that for another time. Okay, next story is called, She Needs to Apologize. Mere hours ago, I had just started my shift for the day and went to my store's front cashier. Not even 10 minutes in, and I've encountered the first rude person of the day. Most aren't Reddit story worthy, and I tend to brush things off, but this was something that made my coworkers laugh. On mobile, so apologies for anything misspelled. Damn your errors. <laughs> This older lady comes up and places her things on the counter. I barely get a hello in before I'm cut off and it begins. There's the cast, there's me, older lady, and manager's voice depends on if it's a dude or a girl, you know the drill. She places our store's brand of allergy medicine on the counter. Three boxes to be precise. You all normally give me 25% off on this. As she holds one up, unsure as to what she is referring to. Pardon? You all, raising her voice, give me 25% off on this. Still obviously confused. Is there something wrong with the packaging? I don't see a sticker on it for a markdown. No, it's buy one, get one half off. I finally understand what she is referring to. Okay, did you not want to get a fourth to complete the two buy one, get one half offs? Or were there no more of the size you were looking for? Need to ask. Can't just give out discounts on a whim. I don't want any more than these three. You never have enough on the shelf. Well, that answered both my concerns. She didn't want to mix and match, and it seems like we might not have any others on the shelf from her choice of words. Change the price of the cheapest, not coming up with the half off already, and applied the 25%, ringed up her items, asked if she wanted to use her saved up store currency. She paid and the receipt printed. Was that the total after the senior discount? That was today? The days just blur together, especially as of lately. I even told her the total as she was watching the screen. Not sure as to why she didn't say anything before she paid. Ah, sorry ma'am, I didn't even realize that was today. Let me call up a manager to post avoid this and I'll re-ring everything. It will only be a moment longer. As I call the manager, I can see as she rolls her eyes in quite a large arc and huffs every other second. Manager comes up, voids it, I re-ring all the items by typing in the UPCs on the receipt instead of unbagging everything, change the price once more, apply the discount, use her currency once again, and a good $40 off. She pays for it and leaves. Paid it no mind, rang up other customers happily, and didn't think anything about how snippy she was until she called. Maybe an hour later is when it rang. I answered the phone, cheerfully recited the company words, and then recognized her voice immediately. Let me speak to the manager. I responded politely and placed her on hold, paged for an available manager to answer the call and went right back on to working the register. From maybe 20 to 25 feet away, I can see the manager pick up the phone. Couldn't make out words, but after long periods of silence, the manager's responses sound like a mixture of cheeriness, direct, and also a little snippy. A few minutes pass of what seemed like them going back and forth, the manager hangs up the phone and walks off. Didn't want to ask what that was all about and minded my own business without question. It wasn't until I called for something at the register that she turned around and started to inform me of the call without even being questioned about it. So you know that call that came in a little while ago? Yes, it was the lady I helped earlier. Let me guess, it was a complaint on me, wasn't it? You are correct. The manager went on by saying how the lady had started off the complaint that I was unbelievably rude to her. 
and she demanded that I apologize to her and that I need to be reprimanded for my behavior. Not once did I raise my voice or go anywhere from a cheerful tone. However, the manager told the lady that she did not believe her complaint, that she couldn't see me being rude, or that I had to give an apology in the first place when she knows I did nothing wrong. The customer didn't tell her anything about the transaction, so when I explained what exactly happened, my minor mistake at the end with the senior discount for the first transaction and the customer's responses and attitude to things. It just got the manager laughing. And the assistant store manager behind her was laughing as well. They both agreed that nothing in there showed that I behaved as she had stated. But I am expecting her to call the corporate number and we might need to speak with the district manager. Retail workers. Unsung heroes. Some of them. Some of them are jerks. But OP, you're not a jerk. You're very patient, and it's appreciated. All right, this story's called Little Girl Tries to Haggle for Jelly Beans, Then for Money for Jelly Beans. I used to work at a department-esque store that sold all sorts of stuff. One time, I saw this adorable little girl try and haggle both me and her mother for jelly beans. Here's the cast. Mother. Adorable child. Probably about six or so. I'm but a bystander in this interaction. I greet them and the little girl in the cart turns to me. Can I have the jelly beans? Holds out a box of jelly beans to me. No, leave her alone. She turns to her mother. Can I have... No, I'm not buying you any candy. Why not? Do you have money? No. Exactly. So who's going to be the one buying it? You. Right. I ring up their items, minus any jelly beans, and take out the woman's change. Adorable child is watching as I take out the bills. She reaches toward me. Can I have that? I hand the mother the change, and she gives her daughter the coins. The little girl looks at the coins, hands them back to her mother, and points to the bills. No, that! This girl was going to try and buy the jelly beans herself. She's a smart cookie. Aww, that's so cute. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.